Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will learn about coroutines. I know coroutines is a very new concept for you, but it is very easy. We will understand the basics of coroutines through an example later. Okay, first let's see what is coroutines. Coroutines are a concurrency design pattern that allow for sequential execution of tasks in a non-blocking manner. In very simple language, coroutines manages multitasking very well by dividing its processes into multiple threads. Now, what is thread? Thread is like a pipeline where all the processes take place. Processes as in UI interaction, image loading, file downloading and all. So, this is our main thread. Here, all the processes take place. Now, imagine how tough it is to handle so many processes by a single thread. The app will lag, it will freeze, even it can get crashed. And that's not how professional app should work, right? Here, coroutines was introduced to overcome the burden that was put on main thread. But how will it overcome? By dividing the processes into multiple thread. You can call it coroutine thread or background thread. Now, as you can see, we have two thread. One is main thread that is handling UI interaction, logical operations and arithmetic operations. And then there is a background thread that is handling file downloading and image loading. The process are divided into two threads which makes coroutine non-blocking because they allow for sequential execution of tasks without blocking the main thread. That ultimately improves app performance and prevent lagging or freezing. Great, right? Now, in core routines, there are few terms that you need to understand. For which, first we need to see how do we create core routines. Here it is. To implement core routines in the app, you need to add this dependency. Then, this is a general syntax core routine scope dispatcher.io.launch. To understand core routines deeply, we need to understand these two terms scope and its type, and dispatcher and its type. So, first, let's understand what is scope. Scope basically determines the lifetime and behavior of coroutines by executing asynchronous code. Now, what is asynchronous? Asynchronous in coroutines means that the task can be executed at the same time without blocking the main thread. Got it? So, we have two types of scope. First is global scope and second is coroutine scope. You can use any scope based on your requirement. First, let's see what is global scope. Global scope is not tied to a specific coroutine. It allows tasks to be executed concurrently means at the same time without being limited by the life cycle of individual coroutines. While coroutine scope is tied to activity life cycle or fragment life cycle means consider coroutines is running and suddenly the app is destroyed means removed from the recent app list then in that case coroutines will also be destroyed because obviously it was dependent on life cycle. But if you have used global scope, then coroutines won't be destroyed because obviously it was not dependent on life cycle. Easy, right? Then let's see what is dispatchers. Very simple definition. Dispatcher defines which thread to use for executing the code, like main thread or background thread. That we need to define, okay? There are three types of dispatcher. Let's see each one of them. First is dispatcher default, second is dispatcher IO, and third is dispatcher main. Basically, which dispatcher are we supposed to use for which process? Like for CPU based operations such as computing or sorting algorithm, then we are supposed to use dispatcher default. Then for IO based operations such as network request or file operations, we are supposed to use dispatcher IO, that is our background thread. Then for all the UI related operations like set on click listener or button or set text, we are supposed to use dispatcher main, that is our main thread itself. Got it? Wait, come back to the previous slide. Look, here main thread is handling all the UI related and mathematical operations and background thread is handling all the IO related operations like file downloading and image downloading, right? See, default thread is main thread only which is pretty good at handling UI related operations such as set on click listener and all. But if you tell main thread to handle file downloading as well, then it will be like I can't do it, tell dispatcher IO or background thread to handle it. Now let's understand it better with a simple coroutine example project. Okay? Open Android Studio. Here is an example project that I created to show you the difference between a app without coroutine and a app with coroutines. First, let me give you a quick overview. This is where we have added the view binding. Then come to activity main.xml. 
Here we have created two processes in the same screen. First is counter process which we have to manually update the count by clicking on the start counting button. And then second process is where a file downloading will be done. Of course there is no actual file getting downloaded, it's just a demo, okay? So to create this UI, first I have used constraint layout as a parent layout, then a text view representing process 1, then another text view which represents the count whose ID is count number, then a button whose ID is count button, then an another text view for process 2, and then a button whose ID is download button. Got it. Now come to main activity. I have not used coroutines yet. See, we have implemented binding, then kept initial counter value as 0, then first button is count button. The logic says, when you will click on the count button, the count number, that is the text view, will be incremented by 1 every time. Then we have another button which is download button. As I said, it's not gonna download an actual file, but it's just a representation of how a file is downloaded. Like I have used a for loop whose variable is i that starts from 1 and goes up to like Lag. Then inside it, there is a lock tag. This lock tag will be visible in logcat. So it goes like we have used tag as a representation for log. Then inside it, a message that says downloading i that will be the number going from 1 to lag in which thread. Like thread dot current thread name represents the thread name in which all this process is happening. Either it will be main thread or in background thread. It will just display the current thread name, that's it. Simple, right? Now remember what I said while explaining it. Default thread is main thread that handles all the UI related operations such as set on click listener. It will handle it wisely. But there is a file downloading process as well. That too has to be handled by the main thread. But do you think it will be able to handle it? Let's find out by running the app. Now see, I'll open logcat so you can see the fake downloading process. This is old process so I'll quickly clear it. I'll use tag as a reference. Then I'll click on start downloading button. See how fast it is getting downloaded on the main thread. But in the middle of the process, I'll start another process as well that is start counting. And look, it is lagging, it is freezing and finally got crashed. It was tough for main thread to handle two different processes at the same time in the same thread. Hence, we will use coroutines. Let's modify the code. So go to build.gradle. Here in dependency, add the following coroutine dependency. You can find it in the description box. Then click on sync now. And done. We won't modify activity main code, so directly come to main activity. Here set on click listener is handled by main thread. Fair enough, but we don't want file downloading to be handled by main thread. Instead, who should handle it? Of course, coroutine or background thread. So, how do we create coroutines? First is to decide which scope. Remember global scope or coroutine scope? I am fine using coroutine scope, even if it is dependent on the life cycle. So, I'll write here as coroutine scope. Then, I have to decide which dispatcher are we supposed to use as I am performing file downloading process, which obviously means I need to use dispatcher IO. So I'll quickly write here. And then finally, launch will execute the below code. So I'll cut paste it. And done. Now this process will run in main thread and this process will run in the background thread. Easy, right? Let's run it. Look, I'll click on start downloading. And see, here it says the downloading is running on the background thread. Simultaneously, I'll click on start counting button as well, which is running on the main thread. Look, no lagging, no freezing and no crash. As both the processes are in different thread, hence it is working perfectly fine. Great, right? So that's it. This was all the basics of coroutines. Later in future, I'll cover coroutines advanced concepts as well. Okay? Also, for more updates, you can follow us on Instagram or join a Telegram group. Link in the description box. So yeah, that is it for the video. If you are new to this channel, then please consider subscribing to my channel. 
అండ్ ఐ విల్ సీన్ ది నెక్స్ట్ వీడియో